Hey, I'm Benji Rollins. I'm glad you stumbled upon this video. If you did, you're probably interested in painting. Maybe you're already an experienced painter, or maybe you're a beginner. I would say my video uh, is more geared towards beginners, but maybe if you like painting and you're like me, you'll watch any video associated with painting, any movie associated with painting, and that's just what you enjoy. So, right now, what we're going to do is paint still life. And it doesn't matter what you're painting from still life, whether it's an apple, a pear, a book, whatever you can think of, uh, it's still gonna follow the same principles. So, what you'll see in my video is the way I paint from still life, uh, which requires, in my point of view, as little drawing as possible. Most people are terrified of drawing. I know I am, and that's why I don't do it. Instead, I use things like a rag with my hand, large paint brushes, and I try to not draw a single fine line, especially when I'm getting started. And even when I'm continuing in the painting, after I create my underpainting, I'm still using large brushes loose strokes, things that you would think are very vague and not specific at all. And the reason I do this is because it frees you up completely from the fear of making mistakes and being attached to lines. So I think when we focus on small lines and intricate drawings, why it's very well okay to do that. It can lead you into this stage when you're a beginner to feel like you're coloring in a color book and if you color outside one of those lines you panic and think how am I ever going to recover that especially as your painting develops. So what you're going to see next is a basic loose sketch of an underpainting by my hands, a rag, large brushes and just defining an overall area and shapes so that I can then prepare myself for the painting. So let's get started so I can show you what I mean. We're gonna paint a stove, a frying pan, and an egg, a fried egg. I don't know, just choose whatever you wanna paint. Don't be bogged down too much when you're first beginning of what you should paint. Although, as you progress, you will start to get very picky about your compositions. I happen to just wanna paint my fairly dirty stove. Check it out. Okay, so here we go. I have my blank canvas set up. And the first thing I'm gonna do is cover the canvas with just a large surface area of the color of my choice. I do recommend starting with more of a brownish red, uh, earthy oranges, brown reds. Uh, something maybe with a bit of warmth that's going to be underneath your painting. However, you can choose whatever you want. In this case, what I've chosen is a purplish brown. It's really purple, but I'm just going to go with it and uh, yeah, I'll just, I'm going to see what happens. So, you know, if you don't do something, you'll never ever understand what happens afterwards. So, what's the worst that can happen? You don't like it afterwards? Throw it out. I don't know. Save it. Someone's gonna like it, I promise you that. Uh, you know, maybe your family member, they always tend to. So yeah, this is my brush. I don't know if you saw that ratty old brush there. I save all my brushes and I use them for things like this. That's a bristle brush. I like to use those in the beginning as well. And uh, yeah, the canvases tend to eat up things. This is my dirty old rag. I'm gonna use that to draw. Uh, well, I don't like to say draw, what a dirty word. So I'm measuring out things with my hand. That's a good way to get started. Just throw your hand over the object. Figure out where it is. Yep, figure out where it is. Yeah, it's over here. Yeah, it's over, no, it's over here. All right, there's my frying pan. So, I like to just start with one object in the painting. That That's going to choose your composition for the rest of the painting. So, choose wisely. Uh, wherever you put it, no, well, everywhere, every, everything else has to go some someplace else. So, yeah, there's my handle. Looks like a frying pan to me. <laughs> All right, so this is my not drawing class. A rag and rather large strokes. Just figuring out using my hand. It tends to be much easier than using charcoal or a pencil or a small brush. Let's get the stove in there. Let's figure that out.
All right. This takes some time. You'll have to just look back and forth over to your still life. Painting from life requires you to, well, constantly compare. Don't try to draw something very accurate. Don't be worried if you don't get it right. The point is not to get it right right now. The point is to give yourself something to paint. You want to get away from that white canvas in the beginning. Oh, I'm dropping my egg in. I'm dropping the egg in by painting not the egg. I'm not drawing the egg. I'm, <laughs> I'm painting the other side of the frying pan. And there's my egg somewhere in there. I just found it. Oh, you'll see later on, you know, I tend to fix this and where I put it. Even fixing is a terrible word sometimes, but I'm just figuring it out. Just be brave enough to figure it out. It's a lot of, a lot of small details to get started here. There's four burners on the stove top. I'll just start to drop them in. So yeah, does it look like I'm drawing? I kind of am, but what I'm really doing is I'm pushing the paint around that's on the canvas already. And do you see by just pushing the wet paint around that's on the canvas, uh, it just sort of slides and creates dimension by accident. <laughs> and as you as you come to you know familiar familiar familiarize, I don't know, as you come to uh, get in tune with this, you start to understand they're not really accidents anymore. There's three vents in the back there. I'm just yeah, loosely throwing them in. Black vents. I put some dark paint on my brush. So I did want to see, just moving things around. No big deal. Figuring it out. This is a bristle, bristle brush. It's pretty big. Big enough to not feel like I have to draw a line. Don't draw a line. Yep. Loosely the top of that burner there. Let's just kind of scramble it in. I don't know, is it somewhere right there? I think so. Yep, I don't know. You know, if you don't get it right, I gotta tell you, by the end of the painting, you may like it, you may like that you didn't get it right. So don't be focused so much on getting everything right. That's not necessarily what painting always is. We're not looking for some hyper real, you know, absolutely correct painting, right? Especially if you're just getting started, don't think that way. Over time, if you want to move towards that direction, then go ahead. But you can start like this and uh, refine your skills as you go. And you, you may very well feel as if, well, you like painting like this. All right, where's the stove? I'm putting in a shadow over there that I'm seeing on the wall. Right? Yep. Yeah. It'll help. Instead of painting the wall, how would I paint that wall? It's just a space over there. There's defining the objects on the edges of the painting. We're working quickly through this painting. And uh, yeah, now I'm going to take the rag and start rubbing off paint instead of putting it on. I want to get the stove there, so I want to get some of that white canvas shining through. I'm, why, why would I bother painting with uh, white paint if there's white canvas existing uh, underneath there, especially for the underpainting? Let's make this as simple as possible. So painting dry, the paint, you know, when you, when you work with this very loose, thin paint in the beginning, in this case, these are water mixable oils. It does it does dry rather fast at this thin of a uh, you know of paint stage. If you're gonna thin down oil paints with paint thinner, you know first off you should have some gloves on. Uh, you, you know you don't want to just work with your hands with caustic materials. So, but you know you're gonna need to work fast. Here I go. Sometimes the paint doesn't want to come off as well as you uh, as much as you'd like it to. But that's no big deal. So the point is not to create something perfect. I just wet the rag right there, maybe a napkin or something. 
There you go, the stove's coming in. All right, I'm starting to get a stove. I don't know, I'm gonna have to paint it still. <laughs> to mention, so you know, it's the proportions are of course off. I kind of like it that way. All right, more stove, stove, stove. What was that? <laughs> so hard to paint straight lines. So don't don't focus on it. Just you know, use your whole body. Put your back into it. We're getting close to the end here of this underpainting. It took me about 25 minutes. So you know, it's sped up. It's about 25 minutes of just lightly sketching in as loose as possible. Some type of sketch. And then when I start to paint, I'll start to just, maybe I'll make some quote unquote corrections, you know? I still wanna control the composition. Look at that, horribly just, yeah. The whole front of the stove is just bending over there. That's okay, it looks kinda cool. It's a New York City stove. <laughs> it may as well be bent, you know? I just need the area where the burner is. It's not there in real life, probably. I moved it a little bit. No problem. It's going to be there in my painting, though. All right. That's the end of the... Uh... Yeah, that's the end. I'm ready to paint. Almost. Ah, oh, no, I forgot. I got to drop in some... Uh... I'm dropping in just some some darks. Just to, just to show myself, I guess, where those uh, the burners are. I think I wanted something a little stronger. I made a little bit of a brown. I'm not sure, you know, why I went with that. I just went for something that was not, you know, white. Something that gives me a little bit of contrast in the eye. The lights and the darks, obviously they're not perfectly correct. And that's not really what I'm shooting for either. I'm not shooting for a perfect underpainting with lights or darks. I just want some type of loosely developed sketch so that I could then paint this stove, frying pan, and fried egg. All right, I don't know. Am I almost done here? It looks, uh, I, I'd say I was ready enough. Uh, the frying pan. A little bit more defined. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Look at that handle. It's just a few loose strokes with a bristle brush. No problem. Let's wipe off a light or something on there so I can see. Yep. Ah, now, now there's the top of the handle. And that's, you don't draw that. You just wipe off the paint. And now you got a reminder. You can paint it later. You can get as details you want. You can make that look as real as you want. But in the beginning, just sketch it in. So I'm putting this frying pan in here. The dimensions are off. I can see it. Right? I'm going to address that later, though. I'm not going to worry about it. Not going to worry about it. So I want to see more of my egg. And I realize that edge of the frying pan right there kind of clipped. The whole front. I'm looking down at the stove at about a 45 degree angle. What am I doing? Sketching in an egg? I'm sketching in the egg. I don't know. Look at that. I'm getting loose with it. I'm going around the egg. Still haven't painted an egg. Oh, I guess I'm starting. That's it. Egg. Boom. There's an egg. <laughs> really honestly, don't, don't get too caught up on details in the beginning. It's my advice. Really get loose with it. Yeah, the stove has these kind of uh, corners there and the top edge, they kind of lean in. So I'm trying to figure that out. I don't know if I'll figure it out right now, but trying to figure it out. I move the brush back and forth. I move it over to the object. I look at it. I move it back and forth on the painting. It's sort of not committed, kind of committed, half committed. Sometimes when you're doing that, you create brush strokes that you kind of like, you know? Just wipe that off. Yeah, all right. Not sure, yeah, see, not even close. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter in the beginning. You just, you just go for it. You just keep working on it. If you're painting an apple, don't worry. Just just start to get the shape in there. Yeah, I'm looking at these uh, 
edge of the stove, realizing what a disaster I created. And part of me cares and part of me doesn't. All right, just wipe off the bottom of the stove. It's not painted. I just wipe it off. Much easier. Much easier to wipe things away and create. Get all the little gradients going on there, you know? When you wipe things away, you just create these just imperfections that look more real than you can create by putting paint on. And that's going to be under our painting, so it's going to give our eyes something to look at. Okay, so... Our underpainting has dried, and now it's it's time to paint. Let's move forward to uh, the final painting and get this completed. So my underpainting is dry because I've used a thinned down version of water mixable oils. Using the water and this very thin uh, wash dries very fast. Even if it's a little bit wet, you're you'll still be able to paint over it and not have uh, any big problems of colors getting muddy. But that's why it's also important to really consider what color is going underneath uh, just in case it soaks into the new fresh paint. But it should dry. Uh, it should dry enough. All right, so what I've done here, it's, it's a fairly white looking stove, but if you notice, it's not so white, you know, it's more uh, of a gray. If you put a pure white next to that, and that stove is not white. What I've done is I've uh, pre-mixed a, a bluish tinted white, and I thought that would be fun for the painting over this uh, purple-ish brown underpainting. I thought that might look nice. I've, mis I've mixed just three shades of it, nothing, nothing too serious, not too much. And what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the, uh, the stove, I'm taking one tone that I've made and I'm placing it where I believe I'm seeing a similar tone and I'm being careful to uh, paint in the direction of the objects. You'll notice I'm really just trying to figure things out still. That whole bent, <laughs> that whole bent stove, I'm, you know, should I repair it? I'll do my best. But I think I'm deciding just to leave it a little bit bent. It's kind of fun. I won't make any big decisions yet. You'll notice I sort of scrub paint around. I, I move around back and forth. I try not to overthink it. and I try to let paint go on as I'm thinking. Sometimes I'll move the brush back and forth, figuring it out. Maybe it looks like I'm scrubbing it in, you know. I'm painting the fence there. <laughs> you know, sometimes it looks like I'm painting a house. Oh, there you go. But it's just, it's just a thought, right? At the end, the, the painting is, is going to be, well, your painting is going to be a, a product of all the decisions you're making. So, thinking and making decisions while you're painting, well, it all, it all appears right in front of you. Every stroke there is a decision I, I went with. And so the paintings will remain somewhat loose if you're allowing yourself to put paint down while you're deciding. You'll see that. You'll see maybe some indecisiveness. And decisiveness, maybe you just leave a stroke. Maybe you blend it. Let's just watch for a bit. Let me get this, uh, let's get some stove paint on there. I like to start in the back, the back. And that's a weird thing to say, but, well, I know there's the iron burners on top of this stove, and I know there's uh, the frying pan. So I'm putting in the stove first. I like to do that before I uh, focus on what I'd like to think is the main object of the painting. Maybe in my mind it was the frying pan. I'm not so sure of that anymore, but in my mind I decided I'm going to save the frying pan or, or uh, the egg. I'm going to save the egg for last. So I've started far away from that by painting the stove first. So if you're painting an apple, a book, and it's on top of a wood shelf, 
I think maybe you're going to think, oh, maybe that apple or the book is the star of my painting. Why don't you go ahead and paint the shell first? Get that out of the way. You know why that's important? It's because when you drop down a big area of color, well, it's going to dictate how a lot of those other colors look. It'll be much easier for you to put down this large area of color. And then when you finally do get to like, let's say that, that apple, or in my case, the egg, when you mix that color, that color for that yolk, and even the color for that egg white there, you're gonna be able to pick the brush up, compare it to the rest of your painting in that big area of color, and you'll have a much easier decision if I paint that egg first, then I'm just, that whole big area has got to respond to that egg and that egg yolk. So I'm going to make it simpler for myself and uh, it'll help me create a painting that feels, well, more like it's one family. Well, you see I'm figuring things out. It's very loose. Just brushed in. Things don't quite get started until you have enough paint on the canvas. It tends to be hard to paint in the beginning when it's uh, when you're just not using enough paint and scraping things in. So I like to just force myself to get paint on. Ah, look at this. Just those vents in the back. You know, let's not get too crazy on them. Just three little strokes and there's vents there now. I go back and forth, work myself around the painting. I've made the decision, as I said, to work on the stove, so I'm going back and forth on the stove. How can I jump? I'm not going to jump so far. And also, I've, I've pre-mixed these, uh, these colors. You see that, that little gray? I, I created a little grayish blue. It's all blue. Add a little bit more into the white to create that gray down there. I mix the black. I like to mix a black. I like to mix a black, my version of it. I don't buy black. I make black. I suggest you make your own blacks too. And the reason is, look at that. That's dark. Now, that's not out of a tube. That's just something I made. The way I made that is from red, blue, and green. So you, I do buy a green. I buy a green. I choose a dark green, a dark blue, and a dark red. Let's go a basic explanation, not the specific colors. Dark blue, dark red, dark green. The red is like a fire engine rich red. The green is a darker green. Rich, full of color, dark chromatic green, dark blue. I mix them together and I play with the range of values. Usually you need a little bit more green and blue towards the end of it, less red, and you get a black. I mix that at the beginning as well, because I like to have it just to push things around. All right, so I'm working on this frying pan. Remember, you know, the dimensions were way off. I didn't, I couldn't see the, the front of that egg. I wanted that little curl of the egg and more of the egg in the painting. I didn't want to hide it so much. So I'm opening the frying pan up. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. I've created this uh, greenish gray. I suggest you make a gray also on your palette. And the way you can do that is just grab every color on your palette, mix it together. You're going to see it makes gray. And then you can kind of swing it towards one direction or another by adding a little bit of a color. I went for a greenish gray for the frying pan. And I know if we look at the photo, well, it's not green. But I'm going to play with, you know, color and reflections. And like I said, I'm not trying to create something so real. I, I, I like it like this. A little more gray in there. Again, I don't want to paint that egg yet, so I'll just paint around it. And look at that, there's no edge of the frying pan. <laughs> it's completely gone. What a disaster. But that's okay, it's just so much fun. Oh, look, I'm putting it back, somehow. It takes time, you just have to play and work with it. Just look, observe. When you're painting from life, it's just so much fun. You really have a lot of freedom. And don't be afraid. 
Don't be afraid to make changes. What's the big deal? This is why it's important not to draw those fine lines. You do not want to get into a coloring game. I'm working in more grays. What I did was I took that I took that greenish gray that I, I made and now I'm mixing in just a little bit of red, a little bit of blue and I'm taking it in different directions all working from that same original gray so it sort of fits in the same family. I put a little minor details in there like a little red splashing back there. There's, you know, I'm just playing around. It's fun to play around. Don't get too committed. I'm patting in what I think are little marks in the pan. Nothing too distinct just yet. And when you continue to paint, the details will start to show up. But you need to get paint on there. You can't just try to do it all at once. There you go. A few strokes. Let's get a handle in there, right? There you go. Just back and forth. Nothing crazy. Don't try to create a line and create a perfect handle. You will, you will do the opposite. A little highlight, a little rounding edge, and back and, well, all right, almost a handle. Kind of looks like a handle to me. <laughs> yeah. And that's, you know, I'm not painting to paint a perfect handle. I just, I want to see a handle, and once I see it, I'm usually okay with it. That's the way I like to paint. I like to live a little bit. Feel a little illustrative, if you will. I can paint real. I can, I can spend maybe several hours on that handle and paint something, and maybe it would look amazing. But... Painting still life, it's just fun to just go and see if you can get objects down very simply. I'm just dropping my black in there. Again, look at that mixed black. You know, it's got a little bit of life to it, you see. It's a little bit of... You see, it's not perfect there. Not a perfect black. It's more interesting, though, to me. So, it fits into my painting because it's, it's out of the same colors I'm using to make the other colors. If it was black out of a tube, it would just be out of nowhere. It wouldn't. It would be something in a different world there. Well, now it sort of lives in my world, making it out of those colors, using all the same colors in every color. Well, they sort of live together now. Go ahead and try that out. Make your own black. I don't know. Some people say maybe you save money buying black. But I just think, you know, it doesn't live in the painting unless you're going to put it in every color. Yeah, so super vague. I'm just, you know, there's these holes next to the burners. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't paint that. I'm not going to try to paint that line. Look how big that brush is. I'm not going to paint something perfect. I'm going to drop it in to remind myself. I just want this thing to start resembling the stove. Mixing colors, you know, preparing myself, changing the gray. Start to get the underside of those burners in. I mean, normally sometimes people would work those in first and paint on top of it. It's okay, the loose brush strokes around it are interesting. Details, 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 they, they come, they come later, they come later. Look at that, just scrub them in. Oh, man, I love the sound of the brush stroke, you can't hear it because the volume's off there, but Man, so relaxing. All right. You can leave things, you can change them, you can uh, brush them in. Everything is your decision. The only thing you shouldn't do is get frustrated and make decisions out of frustration. 
Just enjoy it and have fun. You like that? You don't like it? Change it. Because, as I said, the end of the painting is just going to be, well, it's just going to be the product of every single decision you made. And if you were frustrated, it will be in the final painting. And if you were afraid to change something, it will be in the final painting. Like to make that a little softer in the back of the painting there. Back of the painting, back of the stove. Ah. You know, lines tend to be softer, softer further away. And as I said, I don't really think we uh I don't know if I said it yet, but I don't really believe we see lines. Ever. Ever, unless you're looking at a line. <laughs> a line that someone made, you know. When you're looking at objects, you just see the overall shapes and forms, and then they're juxtaposed. They, against other shapes and forms, and then you see them forward or back, and then you're seeing light. So, don't put any lines there. Just scrub large shapes in, and your forms will develop. You don't have to be as loose as my painting here is. Sloppy. <laughs> Looks a little sloppy with my bent stove. Man, stove is so bent. I like it. I like it. I'm going to return that stove. I'm going to take that stove back to the store. I'm going to take my painting and say, look, you sold me a bent stove. I can prove it. Look at this painting. All right, I'm, I jump around, you know, jump around, see where I need to figure things out, add details, <clears throat> refine things. And I know that while I'm doing that earlier, I just kind of slop things on there. <clears throat> and I know. I know when it's ready, you know. I know when it's done. But I have to let myself get there. There's a little grease there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow. Probably startled you with that cough. Stove's a little dirty. That's why I cooked quite a bit and I left it on there. Don't think I'm so dirty. But, you know, if you come over to my house for dinner, it's going to be really clean before you come over. But, yeah, when you're not there, <laughs> it might look like this sometimes. I suppose sometimes you do that at your house, too. Sometimes people just clean it right away. and You know, we're all different. Mine gets like that sometimes. Things just tend to splatter. I'm a horrible cook. I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh, you know, you tend to get these little grease spots on the stove. So there they are. There's the dirty little grease. Look at that. It's just some, it's just some smudged on orangey brown paint. I took a little orange I added it into that gray. I like to kind of dull it down all in the same family there. I just wanted to live together. I didn't want to put some bright orange there. I mean, look at that egg yolk. Do uh, you think I want something competing with that? And just use your fingers. Smudge things in a direction. Don't forget paintings have directions. There's always a direction in a painting. It always wants to take you somewhere. And that even starts when you put the first stroke on. Your painting starts to go in a certain direction. And they tend to, the painting tends to take you where, you, where, you, uh, where it wants to go. You tend to make your decisions based on... Uh, those initial strokes, and if you uh, if you listen close enough, the painting will take you in the direction that it wants to go. You gotta trust those decisions to get there. Makes a little pink there. You know, don't want to go too bright. Just wanted some other colors to get into that uh, metal surface. I don't know how to paint that metal. <laughs> I, I don't. I'm just putting different colors on. I'm trying to figure it out. All you're doing is trying to figure it out. Look, I'm just like, ah, what, what's going on here? This bent stove. Ah, this bent frying pan. Look at it. It's not even a, is that an oval? It's like some weird shape. It's kind of fun though. I like it. I like it. Feels like my frying pan. Feels like my frying pan. Oh, look at that. A chip. Those are the chips. Those are the chips in the side of the stove. Just pop that. Just pop it on there. That's a chip. 
Don't paint a chip. Don't try to paint a chip. Look at that. That's a chip. That's a chip on my stove. I don't know. Looks like a chip to me. Uh, more little dirt and chips around the stove. Little blemishes. Uh, now I'm starting to put details on because I have that uh, that basic uh, completed stove top, you know. I'm starting to go for details. Look at this. I don't know. Is it, is it good? Is it not? I don't know. <laughs> don't be afraid to insult yourself while you're painting a little bit. <laughs> You have to be able to joke around, though. Don't go, don't be hard on yourself. But yeah, did I get that edge of the stove right? Is it all bent? That's hysterical. I don't know. Enjoy it, though. Have fun. I gotta paint that wall. How do you paint a wall? My goodness. It's just a flat surface over there. So I'm gonna paint the wall around that shadow. <clears throat> and, uh,. Yeah, let's see if I can get a wall there. I just, I just, I made another gray, a grayish green. I lightened it up a little bit. It's kind of the same green in the frying pan. Just I moved some more uh, white into it. Just changed it a little bit. There's a shadow between the stove and the uh, wall. I gotta get that right, right enough, so that it looks like a wall. Cause that's really what's gonna make my wall. Man, I'm bad at painting lines. Look at that. It's just back and forth. Who cares? All right. It's like I'm painting a molding in someone's house. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Get a little sloppier. Don't you dare use tape and make a straight line right there. Not, not, <laughs> not for this type of still life. But you could do it. It's, it's fun. Sometimes you need to. When you're uh, painting these things with uh, architectural lines, sometimes you'll need to do that probably. <clears throat> but you can do it without it. All right, that's a shadow. It's starting to look like a wall over there. So you don't need to do much. I'm just scrubbing paint around, moving it around. Do I like it? There's a little purple coming underneath that wall. I kind of like it. I like this purple underneath this uh, blue stove. I like it. I'm leaving it. I, I like it. I'm going to leave it all just like that. I'll have details, but... Man, it, it just gives that paint so much more life. You got to give it life. I'm putting a little dirt in there. You know? Just a little dirt. You can't see it right now. I think it's blocked by the, uh, the stove picture. But at the end, you'll see it. And it's just so minor. Little details for fun. All right, what am I doing? Get paint on your brush. Man, it's so hard to paint when you don't have paint in your brush. I'm like spreading around. Jeez. <laughs> I'm so messy. I have chunks of paint, napkins from scrubbing things off. Just, oh, yeah, let's get out of there. Uh, sometimes they'll end up in the painting. Just leave them. It'll be fun 100 years from now. Some art critic will stand in front of it and just contemplate that dried up napkin on the bottom of your painting. Hmm. They'll look at my bent stove. My bent stove, some art critic will say a hundred years from now, and they'll say, you know, this bent stove, it really shows how he felt about that stove. <laughs> Not really, I just couldn't draw the line well enough and I just decided I'm gonna leave it, I like it. No, 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 it's bent. That stove is bent because at that time in his life, it was 2020, his whole life was bent. Ah, oh, man. So profound.
But hey, if you don't leave things like that, sometimes people have nothing uh, to think about and enjoy. Oh, mistakes are enjoyable. We, we know we love, we love mistakes. We love imperfections. Oh, being perfect is really boring. That's why I'm telling you, you have to paint from life. You could paint from photos. You do, do, do it at some point. I know you want to. I know you want to. Maybe you have to. Maybe you have to take a port, do a portrait of somebody. You can't have them sit for you. Sure thing. Maybe you want to uh, paint a really elaborate still life and you don't have time to let it sit around, so you need to capture it with some photos. But you must also paint from life to learn this part of painting. I just have the hint, the hint of some knobs down there, you know, for the stoves, for the stove. Maybe I'll turn it on at the end. <laughs> oh, hey, if you're painting by a stove with oil paint or something like flammable, hey, please, let's just, uh, yeah, don't put your materials next to the stove. Don't turn the stove on. Um, yeah, no fires here, please. If you are going to turn the stove on, I want you to move everything away from the stove, clean up, and uh, you can go ahead and then turn it on to see what your flame looks like. If you're going to add a flame. I haven't really decided. I feel like I want to add a flame. I need an egg though somewhere. Oh, am I doing the egg? Oh, hey. Alright, see how fast we can get an egg on here. No lines. No lines. That's like a green white. It, it seems to work, you know. It seems to work. It's a yellowish, yellowish white green. Can't go white. Can't go white. Mm -hmm. Just kind of figuring it out. Is that where the egg is? Yep. And there's a rough edge over there. All right. It's almost an egg. Well, it kind of looks like an egg to me. All right, this is the edge of the egg. Yep, no lines, no lines. I'm just plopping little drops of paint on there. Yep, all right. That's where those little crispy edges are turning up. I didn't draw, I didn't draw a line. I didn't draw the little crispy edge up. I just blobbed on some brownish paint towards the end of the, uh, the egg there, and it turned it up. Turn it up. Ah, I think we should put the yolk in there. Eventually, you just got to start getting more details in, right? You got a nice orange in there. I think I dropped the orange back with some uh, purple, just a little, just a little, little tick, just enough to drop the chroma back out of the orange, and then it's over purple, so. You can see it coming through. I like it. Even if you look at the egg in the uh, in the frying pan, it's not so bright. Top of that yolk has got a shadow. You leave that there. Just leave some of it there. I was working in some brown towards the bottom. And then I kind of like it. Yeah, I like it. Leave it. Leave it. Look, that's an egg. That's an egg. Yeah, why not? A little crispy edge. Yeah, Ugh, just five brush strokes. A little crispy edge. Be as simple as possible. Don't overthink it. This painting is kind of fun. It's just loose and, well, it feels just as dirty as my stove. <laughs> oh, I got a highlight there on the egg. That's a yolk. That is an egg yolk. That looks like a yolk to me. Looks a little wet. Doesn't look super cooked through. I bet you I can, yep. You know what kind of yolk that is. So simple. Don't go crazy.
Uh, just being a little bit more detailed now with that frying pan. I'm, I'm cleaning it up a little bit. Not everything in the painting should be completely sloppy. You know? This painting looks kind of like my, my bedroom when I was a kid. <laughs> you got to kind of hide some of it, though, you know? Can't be a complete disaster. Hmm. Now I'm comparing. Oh, I see. I didn't want the uh, little bolt there to compete with the egg, so I compared it to the egg yolk. Just to make sure. Look at that. Just spin it. Ah, yeah, that's how you do a circle. <laughs> I'll just clean it up. Oh, just a little black paint right around it. Good enough. That is good enough. If you're going to paint a circle there, tell me I have to paint a small little circle there perfectly. I'm, I just disagree with you. You see that handle? You know there's a bolt. Don't kid me. That's pretty ugly. Yeah, you gotta fix that. No big deal. No big deal. Yeah, yeah, just drop some black paint over it and then clean up the line. Aha. You can sort of sculpt paint around paint. And you'll have a much easier time cleaning up edges like that. Paint around the objects. That's how we see, right? We see the objects. And we see them because we see what's around them as well. That's how that's how they get defined. And by the light. And by the light. Yeah, so some more details here. Well, the black iron around the uh, the burners, I gotta get some of that in. Look, I sort of even, you know, just sort of invented. My mind's a little stretched out. Mine's a little stretched out from the, uh, you know, I'm working from life, so. All right. All right. Starting to look like a stove. I can't paint that metal. I just I'm gonna put some kind of paint on there that resembles it. Looks black to me. It's kind of in a circular shape. That's just what I'm gonna do. Yep. I noticed that gray there. You know, I wanna. I'm gonna sort of, they still kind of, they're white, but they're just a little darker dropping down. But, you know, I'm not gonna get it perfect. I kind of like the contrast of the darker gray into the stove as well. Kind of gave the painting a little bit more life. Just fake it. Fake it till you make it. Uh, I gotta get the burners in there. Oh, look how detailed those things are. No way, no way am I gonna try to paint that. Just scrub it in there. <laughs> Just fake it. All right, whatever. Yeah, something like that. It's just in the middle there. Yep. Look at this, I'm so insecure about it, but then I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna live in that insecurity. <laughs> and I'm gonna be so secure that I am not going to paint that object with lines and with detail. I'm going to lift just, I'm going to just birth them. <laughs> I'm just going to make these appear with sloppy paint somehow. Oh, look, details. Boom, vents. All right, that's starting to look like a burner back there. I don't know. Look at all this purple. I, I really love it coming through there. It's purplish brown. It looks more purple now. All right. Ah, 
Ah, uh, we're almost done with this painting. We've gotten a lot of work done so far. You know, as I was painting this, it took me about 25 minutes for the underpainting. It took me about an hour and a half for this painting. I like that. I'm trying to get it done as fast as possible, not spend all day on it. But just enough to keep it fresh. But we're, we're getting there. I'm putting details on because I'm getting, I'm getting closer to the edge. I got my egg in there. So now it's just about refining. You sort of have to work back and forth, right? You have to keep working back and forth to see what you need to do. I dropped a little bit of a white edge. There you go. I'm putting, yeah, yeah. What's that? All right. Because I wanted the, uh, there's a hole there. So I just wanted to, oh, there's an edge. There's an edge. All right. So I just put an edge on. All right, all right. I don't know, it looks like a hole to me. That line seemed effective. Line. There I am. All right. Yeah. Let's see. I'm going to put some. I'm going to turn the... Yeah. Oh, look at the flame. I love it. Just a little blue. Just a dot and a dot. Oh, the egg's cooking. I think that's my favorite part right now. <laughs> Put a little orange dot right there because this little orange flame is just shooting out every once in a while from the blue stove flame. I kind of like it. So I put it there. Kind of makes the blue pop out a little bit more. Can't see much flame, but I can see the edge of it. Let's see the edge of it. I want the egg to be cooking, sizzling. Well, I'm, I'm really close to finishing here. I like the painting. I like the loose feel to it. I love the little bent edge. That's my stove. I recognize it. I've cooked on that. Just let it live. You'll feel good about it sometimes. Ah, oh, just little details with the finger. You don't need a brush. All right, I'm just taking a look around to put some final dirt and grease on the painting We're on the top of the stove there, just so I can. Uh, this these final touches make it feel more like my stove. I don't want to do too much. I've already sort of finished. Just thinking, oh yeah, little dot. Oh yeah, all right. There's a little speck of something and a little speck there. And that's it. I'm uh, I'm closing in. See, want to add anything else before I'm finished? Maybe just a little final touch. Just something. I know something's missing. Yeah, all right, a little grease in the pan. A little burnt down grease. And that's about it. Let's just finish that up. Just leave it, let it live. Finish your paintings. Don't get too caught up on them. So as all things come to an end, this painting is complete. I'd like to thank you for watching. And uh, if you'd like, to see more, please subscribe. I will be uploading regularly. Um, I will be painting from life and sharing my style of painting, which is loose. And if you remember, the goal to draw as little as possible. Avoid those lines and let the painting develop on its own. They really do have a way of taking you in the direction that they want to go. You can make them as detailed as possible. They don't have to be loose like this. You may want to make them very detailed. However, you can do that by drawing as little as possible and just continue to add details and details and details. It'll be up to you. Painting and the painting will always be a product of your decisions. Make strong decisions. Make them fun, have a sense of humor. Let your paintings live, 
and really enjoy. I hope you'll subscribe to see the next videos. Thanks so much.